All right. Our first lesson in main stage is going to be uh, how to set up a really easy concert. And then we're going to be able to go and add to that and keep uh, really doing some cool stuff uh, that is either really hard to do with keyboard workstations or you really can't do with it. So let's get started here. Uh, main stage is $29.99 from the Mac uh, App Store. I highly recommend uh, the purchase. It is worth way, way more money than that, even if you only use the built-in uh, and included instruments and plugins. All right, so we go to main stage. We're going to look here. If we go to new, we can see we have all different kinds of settings. Quick start, keyboards, guitar, and bass, uh, drums. It's a bunch of drum pads, vocals with backing tracks, backing tracks by themselves. Uh, these are all just templates. You know, you can start with one that uh, really works with what you're trying to do and then build from there. We're going to go really basic right now and just go with keyboard minimalist. All right, so we load that up. Okay, now, no MIDI device connected. Let me plug my keyboard in. So if you have a USB keyboard, most likely uh, you can just plug in the USB and it'll work. Usually we don't need drivers for the USB keyboards. All right, so I'm plugged in now. And it says creating MIDI keyboard assignments. And if I look here, I now have sound. Uh, so it defaults to an electric piano on this patch. Now if we look at main stage just to get a quick overview, uh, our three main buttons are up here. We have layout, which when you click there, you can go and assign uh, anything that's already here, delete and add uh, different controls, knobs, faders, drum pads, meters, uh, all kinds of really cool stuff. And then you can assign them to do anything you want. Uh, and you can even change those assignments based on the patch that you have selected. So we'll get into that in later videos. Right now, what's of uh, concern to us is really going to be our keyboard here. So if I click on it, I see it's already assigned my Axiom that I'm using. Uh, it also shows me a list of other keyboards I've previously used. Uh, one thing, if you're going to use this for multi-keyboard setup, you might want to have uh, two different keyboards. It makes it a little bit easier because uh, as soon as you plug them in, you know, it recognizes one as one type and one as another, as opposed to having to remember which port to plug in or reassign the keyboards if you use two of the same. Uh, technically, you can have as many keyboards. I've only tried four. Uh, total on here, but technically you could have as many as USB ports as you can have. Remember, once again, this is a Mac-only program. Uh, if you have a PC, I don't know that there's an equivalent really available for you. All right, so now we see this is already selected. We're going to spend a lot of time in this window um, really assigning everything and getting everything working exactly how we want it for live use. I go to the edit window, and this is where I can really add patches, edit patches. Uh, my, all my channel strips are here. I have my electric piano channel strip there. And then if you look, uh, since I used a preset template, I have uh, two sends that have uh, already been created for me. If I look, they both have uh, reverbs on them right now. Uh, I have my sends here on my electric piano check, so I can see if I raise my send. You know, I can take it all the way from nothing or up. Okay. So if you look down here, I have a sustain pedal. There's also an expression pedal. Uh, you can assign these to do anything. The sustain pedal usually is for sustain. It can be assigned uh, 
to be for patch changes. You can assign it as an on-off switch for a certain effect on a patch. Uh, you can have it control your organ uh, Leslie effect to turn it on and off. So there's many things you can do uh, with either of these pedals. And of course, your expression can be used uh, for effect sends. It can be used for volume. A number of really cool cool things we'll get into later. All right, so I have my one keyboard. We're just gonna pretend I'm only using one keyboard in my setup for now. So if I wanna add more patches, it's really simple. I just click over here. I do new patch with channel strip and I can give it a name. Uh, we'll call this organ. And I look here, I wanna make sure I choose instrument. It already lets me choose my MIDI input if I need to. Uh, if I have more than one MIDI instrument available and my output. So if I have an interface hooked up sometimes uh, when I'm playing live, I will you know, have five or six or eight channels that I need sent separated out to the front of house uh, engineer. So I might have, uh, for a reggae show, I would have you know, my organ shuffle on one channel, my piano on one channel, an effects channel, uh, you know, different other sounds on different channels. Uh, so it can all be mixed. And the beauty of the MIDI keyboard with the interface is you can assign any instrument to any channel. So I can play, you know, four or five instruments on one keyboard and have them all assigned to different audio channels, uh, which makes it really easy for the engineer. All right, so organ, create. So if I look down here, it's giving me options in my channel strip library if I just want to go and uh, choose from a preset. So just for time purposes, we're going to look at a preset here. We'll do Jazz Fusion Organ. So I click that. I have my organ there. All right, so I have my organ. Uh, look here, it's really easy to change You know everything. This is my volume here, if I wanna just change it uh, based on my MIDI, zero to 127. Uh, here, if I wanna change actual setting, I can do it from here or from down here. I have EQ, if I just double click, my EQ will come up and I can now go ahead and you know EQ however I would like. Another thing that makes this way uh, easier than keyboard workstations is the effects routing. And we're also used to using DAWs now uh, that, you know, being able to use the same kind of process for your live uh, show and a lot of times the same sounds. We're using a lot of soft synths now in productions, whether it be from Logic or Pro Tools or whatever you're uh, Ableton or whatever you're using. Uh, and you can recreate exactly a lot of those patches from studio recordings uh, based on that. All right, so that's our EQ. Uh, there's a new thing in Main Stage 3 and Logic X called MIDI effects. And those are really simple ways to get some really cool MIDI effects like arpeggiator, uh, chord trigger if you want to do single note chords, uh, modulator note repeater. You know, we have all these kind of uh, MIDI effects that are really cool we can play around with. Now under audio effects, I can go and add different plugins if I want to add some distortion or an amp modeler or what have you. Then I have my sense, uh, which right now I told you we had those two reverbs hooked up. Uh, output and then our pan. Volume with our meter, mute solo. So it's just like a regular channel strip. It looks exactly like Logic. Uh, if you're familiar with Logic. All right, so now I've added an organ. I have an electric piano. Uh, let's say I want to be able to switch between those two without having to click on with the mouse. Uh, so I want to assign a button on my MIDI controller that's going to one for forward, one for back through my patch list. Besides patches, if you see down here, it might be kind of hard to see. There's something that says set right down here. And what the set does is you can create, you know, a set could be literally a set or it could contain 
multiple patches for one song and each set could be an individual song. So you could have different buttons that move through sets and ones that move through patches within the set. All right, so like we said before, we got to go to layout to do any of this kind of stuff. All right, when I go to layout, it's very simple. Once I have, you know, everything hooked up, all I have to do is click on the button I want to assign. So this is my patch down button so I can press something on my keyboard and make the uh, it scroll through the patches. So it's as simple as clicking that, going here, hitting assign. And then I'm going to touch the fast forward button on my controller for the patch down. And if you see right there, it lit up. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'm gonna touch the rewind button for that. Okay. So now if I go to edit, I can now scroll through without using my mouse. Okay, now if you see here, when I hit the back one, the set button lights up. So that must've been assigned, uh, pre-assigned from the template. So I can actually click there and um, just unassign it or if we look here we have our assignments and mappings and you can go in there and uh, change your assignments too so if I look here I have these two that are both going through control 21 so I can just delete the one that's necessary to delete All right, now look what happened here when I tried to delete it while I was on organ. It says cannot delete mapping. Uh, things can be mapped at two different levels. We have the concert level, which if I click here, I'm now on the concert level, which is the overall global mapping. So when I map something in layout, it's gonna be uh, part of my global mapping. Or I can click on a title concert or whatever my concert's called and do global concert mapping for things from here too. So that's where you have to go sometimes to delete things if they were made uh, for global. Now you can override global uh, settings if you need to. So let's say um, I have a expression pedal that I use for a delay on every track, but there's maybe a couple of patches I wanna use it for something different. I would then have to go into the patch and override the concert setting. So I would click on the patch And then let's say uh, I want to change my you know, pedal or something like that. When I click on whatever I want to change in this window, I'm going to see down here I have an option to select override concert mapping. So if I select that, now it's, you see it's given me options now for mappings and then unmapped. So it's showing me nothing's been mapped. If I go to unmapped, I now have an option. I can either choose, you know, things from here. So let's say I need to tap tempo button. I might have a, you know, a drum button here. And, you know, I can hit tap tempo or I can choose from any of these actions. Or if the action is not there, all I have to do is hit map parameter and then choose what I want to map it to. So I'd say I want this to control bus two. I'm going to click on my bus two send. And now as you see down here, it's giving me bus two level and I hit map again to turn it off and I mapped. So if I click here and raise my expression pedal, you will see over here by my bus two that it also raises and lowers it. Then I can also change my saved value. So when I switch patches and come back, what does it uh, save it to? Is it gonna be totally off, partially on, all the way up? I can set my range max if I want my, you know, send in this case not to get too loud. Uh, when I sweep through the pedal and I can set my minimum also. So that's really helpful and that works for anything. I can take any um, item on screen and map it to anything I want. So the chain of mapping basically is in layout, is where you add things down here, your different screen controls, and then I assign them to my physical keys on my keyboard 
or controller. And then when I go back to edit, and I can click on these, and that is where I can assign them to actual functions. So if I go to layout and I want to have a uh, button be my tap tempo button, I just click button and drag it here. Like we said before, we go to assign. I'm going to hit a button to assign for tap tempo. All right, so you see how it changed. Click it to turn the assign off. Now I go back to edit. And you see that there's a exclamation mark there. That means I have a button, but it doesn't know what to do with the button. So I want it to be tap tempo, like I said. Uh, now I'm at unmapped. If I go to actions, I can now go down to tap tempo. And now you see right here it says tap tempo. Now if I hit my button and I tap my tempo, you can see how it moves. All right. Now you could assign that to a foot controller if you wanted, to any button on your controller, any note on your controller. Uh, literally anything that sends or receives a MIDI message can be assigned uh, to anything else. That's the beauty of this uh, program. Uh, another thing that's great is if you're Let's say you know, you're out on tour and you need to change some stuff for some songs and you're going to be late for sound check. You can be on the tour bus or van or wherever you are, airplane, and just pull out your computer and either use the, just the screen or you could have like a little tiny, uh, I have a Korg Nano Key, a little tiny MIDI controller I, I take with me and you can hook that up and uh, you know, change things, alter your patches. Uh, <laughs> And, and really tweak your sounds exactly how you want them. All right, so, so far we've covered um, creating instruments, creating patches, uh, going through your channel strip, uh, signal flow, how to assign buttons and knobs and faders, and then how to make them uh, correlate to your different uh, plugins. All right, so go ahead and try this out, and then we'll get into more advanced topics next time, like uh, advanced effects, uh, layering, uh, more mappings, multiple keyboard inputs, and how to deal with that. And if there's anything else you're interested in, please just send me a message, and I will see what I can do. Thanks for watching.